Hello, learners. Uh, welcome back to our segment. Remember our continuation of our, our revisions. And uh, in our last class, uh, of course, uh, we were looking at uh, management accounting and advanced management accounting concept. And in that case, we're dealing with the concept of a CVP analysis, but for multiple products. So these are, of course, uh, what uh, we did. And uh, the other part of the question, I requested that us to clear, which I believe we've done so. So today's segment is a continuation of the same. I want us to look at a different concept of uh, CVP analysis. In this case, our question is uh, whatever that I've displayed. I want to believe is very visible for all of us to be able to view it. So uh, in this case, you're told that uh, we're having this uh, company known as uh, Sori Limited. So we're told like uh, Sori Limited uh, produces and sells three products, A, B, and C. Sorry Limited has contracts to supply products A and B, which will utilize all the specific uh, materials that are available to make these two products during the next period. The revenue that these co contracts will generate and the contribution to sales ratio of products A and B are as follows. You are given product A and you are given product B, <clears throat> the revenue expected in the CS ratio Additional information, you are told that product C will generate a contribution to sales ratio of 25%. The total fees cost of Sori Limited are 5.5 million during the next period. The management have budgeted to earn a profit of 1 million. So, required, you are told, the revenue that needs to be generated from product C for Sori Limited to achieve the budgeted profit. So once given such a question, of course, it is open because all that we are requested to do here is to determine that revenue component, right? So let me put the question there. So you'll find that, uh, of course, uh, these are an interesting area of a CVP analysis because it is not direct. But what you are required to do is for you to determine that component of revenue that this product will generate. So once given such a question, uh, the whole bit of uh, the whole concept, ideally this question was uh, testing you on whether you've understood the concept of uh, the whole of CVP analysis or not. A very interesting question, which of course it is helpful for advanced management accounting students and management accounting students. So how will you go about it? First thing first, we start from the basics. At this point, we are required to generate or we are required to work out what to determine the revenue. So it is important for us to ask ourselves, what are the ways that you can always use to generate our revenue? Amongst the ways that you can always use to determine our revenue, we'll always be talking of, of course, selling price per unit times the number of units. In that case, will we, is there any point where this will be uh, will come handy at that point? No, we weren't given the quantities. So again, this should take us back to another concept whereby we know very well that at any given point, I am asked of uh, the profit. For profit, we'll always take, of course, our contribution. We'll always take our contribution. We'll ask what? Our fixed cost. This will always give us what? Our contribution. So once I've noted this, the other key element that I need to ask ourselves, how do you normally determine your contribution, my good students? Our contribution, we normally tend to talk about our total sales minus total a variable cost. Right? But again, the good examiner here had given us our CS ratio. See how you're breaking it. You know very well that your CS ratio will always be talking about contribution, my good students, divide by sales. So on this case, what do we have? You need to identify that. You need to identify that. So from this case, after dissecting or dividing this concept into bits, we can now find a way out, right? 
what were we given based on the profit? Because these are the leads that our good examiner was giving us. We told that our profit in this case, we had the profit for the entire company, the profit that the entire company was expected to generate. We were given, note three, the management have budgeted to earn a profit of one million. So we have my one million here, which will be equal to contribution that we don't have with less the fixed cost which you also given it was anticipated that the firm will earn a or rather will incur a fixed cost of what 5.5 we have a lead already we have a lead so in this case can you determine the contribution for the entire company therefore my contribution here for the entire company will be 1 million of course plus 5.5 right so i'll be talking of 1 million plus a 5.5, which would give us a value of 6.5. So already we have determined the contribution for the entire company. After we have determined the contribution for the entire company, what is the next step here? The next step, my good students, it should be upon us to use the details that you are given there. If the contribution for the entire company is this, and we are given the lead to determine for these products that you're having. So like in our case, how many products are you given? You're given product A, product B, and product C. So the total contribution for the whole of these products should give us a total of how much? 6.5. And you know very well that you're given our CS ratio. Our CS, we know very well you're about contribution of our sales. At this point, the good examiner had given us a lead, and you can see we are given the sales for product A and product B. You are given the sales for product A and product B. So if given the sales for these two products, the question would be, my good students, is there any point that we can determine our contribution? Yes, there will be a lead where we can determine our contribution. So how will we determine this contribution of ours? To determine our contribution of ours, you realize that this will be easy now because whatever that I'll be expected to have would be my CS for product A, for example. Our CS for product A, for example, in this context, you are given 15%. So I'd be having 15% is equal to contribution that I don't have. We divide by the sales for product A. You are given sales for product A to be what 10 million. So given this lead, can you determine, my good students, can you determine your contribution? Yes, we can. So therefore, product A, I'll be having 15% of the 10 million here. Product B, the same concept will apply where you're given 20%. Uh, was it 20 or 15%? You're given 10%. Uh, Check the contribution at that point for product B. We have 10%, so we take 10%. We multiply by the sales, which in this case, you're given a sales value of what? 20 million. See? So having that case, you can determine the contribution for these two products, which will be, with a lot of confidence, you come and take. The first case, I can see it is 1.5. At the other part, in this case, we have 2 million. Because it is 10% of 20. And you know very well that as at the end of the day, whatever value that I'll be expected to have here would be, as at the end of the day, I'll be expected to have 6.5 total. I'll be expected to have a contribution of 6.5. So what is this missing value here? What is our missing value at that point? So missing value, we can all agree 
that should be what? Contribution now for C. I'll be having what? 3 million here. Right? That will be our contribution for, uh, of course, C. And C, in this case, remember, you are given a contribution to sales ratio. We are given a value of what? Check the sales ratio given of C. Product C, note one. Product C will generate a contribution to sales ratio of what? 25%. So CS ratio of C is 25% times the revenue to get the value of 3 million. Our task here, I can now remove the question I give. Our task here is simple. Our task here, my good students, is now to determine the revenue. And you know very well from this formula, our CS, which is 25%, is equal to contribution, which is 3 million, Divide by our cells that we don't know. Or the way we've looked at it here, our contribution times our revenue to give us that value. So the question is, can you determine your cells? Can you determine your cells? To determine our cells, it will be easy now because I'll just be taking our value, which is 3 million, you're going to divide by 25% so that as at the end of the day, what will be your sales? As at the end of the day, we'll be talking of 3 million here. Divide by 0.25, which will give us a sales revenue of 12 million. So, confidently, we'll agree and say that the revenue expected from product C is what? A value of 12 million and that is what the good examiner wanted us to determine my good students as simple as that so as i mentioned earlier on the revision is to guide us on some specific areas and of course to look at uh, key concepts that you must be able to understand on a particular concept so this point uh, thank you so much we we'll meet in our next session whereby you're going to cover of course a whole different concept. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.